Hi, Merrick Voss, and the Aquaman movie finally has a full trailer for us with some impressive imagery from director James Wan and Jason Momoa as the rock star fish talker that Vinny Chase could never live up to. There's a lot to break down here. Visual details you may have missed and references to the comics. So I'm gonna explain who all these characters are and what may go down in the movie, so possible spoiler warning in case my predictions end up being right. Let's dive in. Oh, that looks cold. So you know what, let's just dip our toes in and then wade in slowly. Oh God, that's really bad. When you get to the middle, why did I do this? My father was a lighthouse keeper. My mother was a queen, but life as a way of bringing people together. He could unite our worlds one day. Okay, this opening section shows us the origin of Arthur Curry, Aquaman, as it's depicted in the recent DC Comics New 52 relaunch that was spearheaded by Jeff Johns, who's now kind of the visionary behind Warner Brothers DC stuff. Arthur's father is the human, Thomas Curry. He's a lighthouse keeper in Amnesty, Maine, and he's being played here by Tamara Morrison, the New Zealand actor who played Jango Fett and his clones in the Star Wars prequels. I love the imagery of this opening shot of the storm, and notice how it's lit with two sources of light, the beacon from the lighthouse on land and and the lightning from the squall over the ocean. These two light sources parallel the two lives that came together to create Aquaman, Thomas Curry and Queen Atlanta, the Atlantean queen from Atlantis. It's always funny to me, it'd be like, I'm a Floridian from Florida and also my name is Floor Dan. We got like eight proper nouns that we just cycle through. Atlanta is played by Nicole Kidman and this shot of her strewn on the rocks could be a nod to the figure Andromeda from Greek mythology. Andromeda was chained to rocks to be fed to a monster from the sea god Poseidon as punishment for her mom's hubris. Over the centuries, a lot of artists depicted women chained to rocks, and that's often a nod to Andromeda. Andromeda was rescued by Perseus, who in this case is reflected in Thomas Curry. Moving on. Check it out, Arthur is talking to the fish. Oh, let me go! They made me what I am. Sorry, I just get excited. In this section, we jump ahead to Arthur's youth and his visit to the Boston Aquarium. These two bullies mock him for talking to fish, yet don't have the self-consciousness to realize that their haircuts are a direct mirror opposite of each other. Now, this idea of talking to fish is a nod to Aquaman's best known power from the classic comics and the cartoon Super Friends. And it is something that the recent DCEU keeps making light of. I hear you can talk to fish. But this moment shows Arthur owning it with the sea life backing him up. Actually, listen closely to when Arthur communes with the shark. That echoey sonar sound is inspired by the original Super Friends sound effect whenever Aquaman tried to talk to fish. My ability to talk with fish is of no help, Wonder Woman. It rarely is, but here it actually looks pretty cool. This whole moment reminds me a lot of that moment when Harry Potter was being bullied in the zoo as he was talking to the snake, and that was long before we realized how important this ability is to his backstory and origin. Kind of like how it is for Arthur Curry here. And notice the way James Wan shot frames Arthur with this massive crack in the glass behind him. This could reflect the way his character is breaking the barrier between the world of the sea and the world of man. Let's move on. Should have come aboard. Here we see the adult Aquaman in action. Jason Momoa torpedoing toward the submarine and hopping aboard. Later in the trailer, there are shots of him actually lifting this submarine to the surface. That's how he gets in there. Aboard the sub, you can see Yahya Abdul-Mateen II as the villain Black Manta. He's with an older man, maybe his father. The actor has said that his character is driven by revenge against Aquaman, so perhaps his father doesn't survive this fight. Let's move on. I've been looking for you. Your half-brother, King Orm, is about to declare war upon the surface world. The only way to stop this war is for you to take your rightful place as king. Trust me, I am no king. Okay, a lot of things going on here. First thing to point about this section is the music. This track is called None Shall Live, and you may recognize it from the trailer for the Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition. 
We see Mira, Amber Heard. She's Aquaman's companion and later wife from the DC Comics. Remember, we saw her briefly in Justice League where she showed off her hydrokinesis abilities. Basically, she's a waterbender. But unlike in Justice League, characters don't need to be in air bubbles to be able to talk to each other. James Wan just made it so that when they're underwater, they just talk to each other. It's easier that way. You don't have to overthink it. And since characters are just going to talk to each other underwater, they don't need to be in air bubbles so that they look dry when they're underwater. They're just surrounded by water. The actors only have to be hosed down, dripping wet when they're out of the water, like Amber Heard is here. And Mira sets up the whole royal conflict of this movie. Arthur's half-brother is King Orm, Ocean Master, played by Patrick Wilson. After giving birth to Arthur on land, Atlanta returned to Atlantis and gave birth to the pure Atlantean Orm. And he resents the surface world because of the damage they've done to the ocean through pollution. And yeah, let's not forget kidnapping orcas, blowing up sharks, and farting at the beach. <laughs> Guy's got a point. In this way, we can expect Aquaman to present a similar conflict to what we've seen in things like Game of Thrones and Black Panther, or the story of King Arthur. But in this case, our hero is the outcast bastard son who just happens to be on the more moral side of this. We also get a shot of the undersea kingdom of Atlantis, and notice these seven statues. These represent the seven kingdoms, one of which is the one at the center of all this, Atlantis. The Atlanteans are the ones riding the sharks. Meanwhile, a second kingdom is Zebel. They're the ones riding the seahorse, sea dragon-like mounts. Whatever these things are, they have legs. And their ruler is Mira's father, King Nereus, played by Dolph Lundgren. He might be the one on the center left, meeting with Orm in the center, who rides the sea crocodile creature. It will be Aquaman's mission in this movie to unite the Seven Kingdoms. When the nation of Atlantis sunk to the bottom of the sea, these Seven Kingdoms split apart from each other. We'll meet some of the other five kingdoms I haven't mentioned yet as we go. I'll point them out. So it looks like Orm may be behind this tsunami that we see slamming a massive ship into the shore as part of his first strike against the land dwellers. Arthur and Thomas survived this attack. You can see Mira there alongside them. Maybe she used her water bending abilities to rescue them from the wave. And before we move on, a really big detail here. We see the shot of King Atlan who bears this trident. This is actually very critical to the story of this movie. I'll get to that in a second. But first, thanks to our sponsor, Mr. Koya. Now, you may have noticed me wearing these stylish shirts recently. These are from Mr. Koya. It's an Australian shirt company that makes quality short sleeve button down shirt designs that you won't find anywhere else. Look, I didn't get into this gig planning to be an on camera YouTuber who thinks about how I look. And yeah, my shirt game over the years, not great. So when I found Mr. Koya, huge game changer. They have some toned down patterns, but also some bolder ones. And all the shirts just feel like some kind of magical cotton courage, making you think, hey, I can be fun while talking about nerd stuff. Well, maybe not as fun as these models, but you know, uh, nerd fun. Each shirt is kind of its own character. This one is called Featherstone, and I like it because it reminds me of my Floridian homeland, and the flamingo is my spirit animal. And we got an amazing offer just for you guys. You can get 20% off your entire order when you purchase two or more shirts just by using our promo code NEWROCKSTARS. Just visit mrkoya.com slash NEWROCKSTARS or click on the link in the description below to look like me. Well, uh, me between the neck and the waist, but um, I assume better sculpted. I'm just speaking directly to Jason Momoa here. I know you want these. Okay, back to this trident. Many were wondering why the weapon Aquaman used in Batman v Superman and Justice League had five spokes, unlike the three of Aquaman's classic trident. That's because that wasn't his trident. That was a quint dent or a pentadent. It's the one belonging to his mother. Remember, you could see her clutching that in earlier shots. Aquaman's journey in this movie will be to recover this ancient trident to prove his claim to the throne. The filmmakers have actually cited classic movies like Raiders of the Lost Ark and Romancing the Stone as inspirations for this story, which is really a pursuit for a lost relic. Okay, on to the next section. Trust me, I am no king. You do your best thinking when you're not thinking at all. That was the worst pep talk. Ever. Arthur refuses Mira's initial call, and if you look closely, you can see this green necklace that he's wearing. Now, at first, some thought this could be a connection to his Atlantean roots, but it's actually a Maori Toki jade necklace. So, like the tattoos on his skin, it's actually another nod to his Polynesian ancestry. We also see Mira and Arthur exploring these ruins. Various looks of the set and a shot in an alternate cut of the trailer shown at Comic Con showed a scene in this location with Arthur and a hologram of King Atlan, who explains the powers of the trident. Also, that extended cut reportedly showed. Aquaman in a final version of his green and orange costume. Moving on. I want to strap in. Welcome home. Okay, here a shot dives into the water to bring us into the city of Atlantis, which looks 
awesome. It looks like this has been built into the sides of a reef, and it has these interesting little details that looks like a chimney releasing air bubbles and elaborate tubes that could run energy from structure to structure, like power lines. We also see that massive sea turtles and whales are apparently used to transport cargo in the society, and that bioluminescent jellyfish are the sources of light, kind of like street lights. I want to go to here. Let's move on. My brother has come from the surface. I call it an ass whooping. In this section, we get a sense of the Atlantean people who participate in gladiator type events. Notice how the crowds are pointing their thumbs down. You may recognize that from the movie Gladiator. That's how the Roman crowds would signal that they wanted someone to be executed. Aquaman and Orm are squaring off in some kind of ritual combat in this arena beside an underwater volcano, which do erupt lava onto the ocean floor like that. Though that means this water that they're in must be boiling hot, making any fight in this area one hell of an intense cage match. But hey, if you can't take the heat, stay out of the underwater kingdom gladiator. Arena. I'm guessing this scene will be around the midpoint of the movie, since Arthur still has his quint dent. Maybe he's trying to take on his half-brother a bit too early, and he's getting beat down before he rises up and returns for a rematch later at the end of the movie. Moving on. I'm no leader. I came because I have no choice. Save my own. Here we see a brief glimpse of Volko, that's Arthur's mentor figure played by Willem Dafoe. He hurls the quintent and it crossfades into Arthur as a younger man on the beach. Notice how he claps the weapon right in front of his face, the same way he does in the earlier shot in the submarine. Kind of looks like a signature move for the guy. Even though the main events of this movie will take place after Justice League, it looks like it'll still be an origin story with some flashbacks to his youth and training, with his training taking place both on the surface world and underwater, suggesting that Arthur has spent most of his life in the sort of exile, both in land and in water, just not running things back in Atlantis yet. That's what this movie is showing us. Moving on. And the people that I love. You think you're unworthy to leave because you're of two different worlds. But that is exactly why you are worthy. That was awesome. Here, Arthur hugs his father goodbye, and in another shot, Queen Atlanta kisses Arthur as a baby goodbye. And we get this very cool shot of Arthur and Mira with a flare, diverting a massive horde of sea monsters away from a boat. These things are from another one of the Seven Kingdoms called the Trench. Notice how these creatures have no eyes. The Trench is way deeper than the other kingdoms. It actually hurts the Atlanteans to go down there because the water pressure is too intense. It's all in a place without light, so their beings have devolved to lose their eyes completely, like many of the terrifying real life sea creatures that are down in those places. James Wan is of course known for his horror films like Saw, Insidious, and The Conjuring, so it looks like he'll be bringing in some of that horror imagery with these trench people. We also see a quick shot of Black Manta, Mira jumping over rooftops in a foot chase, and these interesting looking beings. Now this is a fourth one of these seven kingdoms called the Fisherman Kingdom. They're a relatively peaceful people. One of them is being played by Jaimon Hansu, who also shows up in the trailer for Shazam as the wizard. This guy's everywhere. Let's move on. coming to the surface and I'm bringing the wrath of the seven seas with me. In this section, we get some good looks at Black Manta with his signature helmet, which, as James Wan promises, almost exactly like his appearance in the comics, no matter how weird it looks in real life. And that includes the optic blasts that fire out of his red eyepieces. This helmet is Atlantean tech that was given to him by King Orm. These two villains are teaming up against Aquaman. Perhaps Orm is using Black Manta as a way to come after Arthur when he's on land. If you look closely as this helmet charges up pre-blast, you can kind of see this red-ish mist hovering over. Him. Now, since this is underwater technology, I'm wondering if the way this helmet operates is by harnessing water vapor from the air. This trailer climaxes with this epic battle, with Orm leading the Atlantean charge against another one of the Seven Kingdoms, a race of crustacean-looking creatures. These are called the Brine. And even though this one's about to be dipped in butter by Orm's mount, I love the way he claws and flings aside this Atlantean warrior like a rag doll. Now, there are two remaining kingdoms that weren't featured in this trailer that we don't really know anything about yet, but I assume there's a good reason for that that we'll see in the final movie. And that brings us to this final section. We're here. What are you doing? Wait, wait, wait. You should have a parachute. Redheads, you gotta love them. <laughs>
Okay, it's not really clear what's going on here. Even the goat looks confused. And I think it's kind of the joke. Mira jumps out of the plane without a parachute to this desert dune location. Perhaps she plans on trying to use her hydrokinesis to absorb what little moisture exists in the desert air to cushion her fall. Either way, it's no surprise how much Arthur loves a good skydive. He spent like 20 minutes of Justice League reenacting Point Break. And then one last missable detail here. The pilot of this plane is a cameo. This is Lee Whannell, James Wan's longtime co-producer and actor in the Saw and Insidious movie. Movies, he just directed Upgrade. Okay, a question for you guys. What other DCEU hero would you like to cameo in this movie? Kind of like the way The Flash made a cameo in Suicide Squad. Could be cool for a short and sweet sighting from another Justice Leaguer like Wonder Woman or Superman. Or maybe a new one. Green Lantern or Martian Manhunter. Comment down below with your thoughts or tweet me at EA Voss and follow New Rockstars on Twitter for updates on our videos. Like this video, share it around, and subscribe to New Rockstars for our breakdowns of more of these Comic-Con trailers. Sam's actually covering Shazam, but we'll also be looking at Godzilla King of Monsters and Crimes are Thank you for watching and uh, I'm gonna go swimming. Bye.